Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Blessed be the name. Oh, 
7th, we will have a uh, uh, get together at our house. Now you mentioned the um, ladies. The secret sisters. Yeah, the secret sisters. You give me a date on that and it doesn't run right in my mind. Well, you don't have to announce it because they know about it. It's, it's those that participated last last year. It'll be, they'll be revealing who they are. The date. It's December the 1st. Sunday. <coughs> Sunday. Sunday after church. Yeah. Lunchtime. See, my calendar, maybe I looked at the wrong calendar, didn't have December 1st. as a Sunday. Well, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure mine is. Yeah. <laughs> I may have looked at the wrong year. That's what got me there. I told you, I'm getting used to this mistake thing. It's kind of working out for me. It is. Yeah. December 1st. So you're right on that. Okay. I am, uh, <clears throat> do pray for me, I'm thinking about something different for Christmas on, on December 25th, that is a Wednesday, and I was thinking about having a service that night, but um, I'm still praying about it, it would be a different service uh, than what we would normally have, but normally by Christmas night I would think unless they're traveling, most of your provas are over unless you're going to see lights, so I don't know. Um, if you have some feedback, feel free to come and tell me what it is uh, and, and understand. I, I feel free to reject it if I want to go a different route. But I would like to have some feedback if you have some ideas on that. So anyway, um, I think that's all our announcements. So let's go ahead at 349. There should be showers of blessing. Would you get that? Can you please stand? <coughs> There shall be showers of blessing, this is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior of all. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. There shall be showers of blessing, fresh is reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come now and honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy felt from us are falling, but for the showers we there shall be showers of blessing, oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we fall. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy from us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. You may be seated. And, um, Bruce, can I put that off to the end? Sure. I forgot to start off with. Sorry. Right. 
All right, if you go ahead and take your Bibles and open up to the book of uh, Jude. We're in the book of Jude. Short book, quick teach. And I will let you know now, the next book we'll be going into will be James. James was supposed to be this time, and for some reason I felt like there was a need to change that. So, um, <clears throat> we will be in James uh, after this. So we had gotten down to, um, uh, well actually we had finished, uh, pretty much uh, finished uh, 17. I think um, the last thing I, I, I said was uh, when a person gets deceived, it's easy to get bitter at the one that deceived them. We cast blame on them for their deception. We, we, uh, we get a little embarrassed probably at being deceived. I've heard of that a lot. <clears throat> but you know, uh, the thing about being deceived by an individual is they set for you. You're not really looking for it, and so they catch you by surprise. So it's not, uh, it's not really, I don't think, anything to get embarrassed by. Um, uh, you know, a lot of times it, it, when we're deceived about things, I say a lot of times, in the Word of God, we're warned about things that we can be deceived about, and yet we still fall for them. So <clears throat> in, in 17 speaks of that. He said, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there were some things that we were told that we need to remember. So uh, call to be called to remember. Uh, if you're going to remember something, you have to have taken the time to absorb it into your, your life, into your mind. Um, we must make ourselves familiar with his word. So let's go into 18. It says, how that they told you. So anyway, let me put it together. It says, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there should be mockers in the last time, who should come, who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Um, we were told, we're told in the word of God, there's going to be mockers. Uh, so how they, how they told you, his word has recorded what Christ taught the apostles. We have all sorts of teachings and warnings in the word of God. As a matter of fact, it contains all we need to be aware of. Uh, coming into the last days, in which I do believe we are in the last days, uh, we need to, to I think, uh, absorb as much of the Word of God as we can, begin to live it more. And the more we know, the more we live it, the more we absorb it, and, and, and it becomes part of us, the, the least these things will surprise us, the least these things will catch us, if you would, unawares. Um, and the more we grow spiritually, uh, the better we will be able to handle the things as they come. I, I, I watched a lot of people in the pandemic, and some people just flew apart. You know, I was, uh, I don't know how long it's been since we took our shots, but I remember I was told, two years, I've got two years. I'm a walking miracle today because it's been a lot longer than that. But, but they, they tell you all these things, and, and, and there's so much, and I don't mean to, 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 to rile this all back up again, but there's so much they worry about when the focus should be on God. Can, can God. Did God make life? Has he raised the dead? Has he control over all things? Then why worry about these little things? I mean, worry more about our relationship with God. Worry about more about your growth and uh, the time you spend with him. But about the word of God and how they told you his word has recorded all these things. Everything we need to know. And this come out this morning in the sermon. Everything we need to know is, is in the Word of God. Everything that we need to know to lead others to God is within us. Everything we need is right here in the Word of God. This is it. And so praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord we can have uh, that uh, indwelling spirit that leads us and keeps us and, and, and protects us and shields us from all these things. But you've got to put on the armor. What good is armor for a soldier if it's in the closet? What good is it if you get on the battlefield and you haven't loaded your gun or brought your, even brought your gun? It's no good. So God's word tells us what will come, but have we, uh, uh, well, let's put it this way. We're not ignorant unless we're willingly ignorant. God, it's right here. I mean, you're supposed to be reading the word of God. You're supposed to be studying the word of God. You're supposed to be uh, spending time with God. So if you're ignorant, it's your fault. God, is, God has not been deceived. He has not hidden these things from us. There may be a lot that we don't know, but what we need to know is right here. He's given us the instructions in order that we might know. So it all falls back on us. Are you taking the time to be in the Word of God? He says here that there will be mockers in the last days. Well, what's a mocker? 
someone that makes funny. Makes funny? Fun. Fun, okay. Fun. Able, Im- it's, many times it's an imitation that to mock, like a mockingbird imitates other birds. So a mockery is an imitation that can make light of or... Make fun of, as he said, yeah. I fully agree. You make fun of something, you mock something. Um, you get into a bunch of people today that are not unsaved, and you say you're a Christian, boy, they, they'll come up with some things. Um, and you have to learn how to take those things. <clears throat> um, in God's Word, when he, he talks about this, is uh, talking about how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time. You know, To me, the first thing I understand is, uh, if there's going to be people that's going to be mocking me, there's going to be uh, making fun of what I believe, then I need to toughen my skin up. You, you ever had somebody tell you you got thin skin? You know what that means? Very sensitive. Very sensitive. And so we need to be in a position where we're not as sensitive. Well, how do we get in that position? Well, <clears throat> it doesn't bother me as much if somebody's mocking me and I know they're wrong and I'm right. It's like, okay, that one's on you. So the more we're in the Word of God, the closer we walk with God, when these mockers come along, it doesn't, it doesn't, have, a, it doesn't have the same effect as if we are immature. Um, yes, sir. If you suspect they're right, then it's, it bothers you a lot more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or if they have pegged it and are definitely right, it, it hits a sore spot. But I, I, I go back to um, uh, Psalms 119, 165. A great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If these people are mocking you and you're right with God, it shouldn't bother you. It should be like water off the duck's back, if, if you would. And so, <clears throat> yeah, uh, be careful that you don't get that, don't have thin skin. Develop a, a relationship with God. And these things won't bother you as much. Uh, anyway, he goes back here and is talking about, like I said, how they told you, how the Word of God has told us. And basically what the Word of God has told us is how to discern between the godly and ungodly. So these mockers, it reveals the characteristics of them. It reveals the characteristics of the man of God. And so as we see these characteristics revealed, we understand whether that person is of God and whether they're not of God. <coughs> I, um, I understand, and I hope you understand as well, that I, our criteria, the criteria we go by is the Word of God. It's not what somebody else says. Somebody else wants to make fun of my belief. They want to make fun of God. Uh, that's on them. Now, usually, I'm a lot more patient when they make fun of me. I don't have as much problem. But when they start making fun of God, I normally draw a little line in the sand there, and, and I, I will say something back. But in actuality, do, do we need to protect God? You know, if you read through the whole Word of God, there's nothing here defending Him. He is that He is. You either take it or not. You either accept it that He's, he's the real God or not. God doesn't need defending. I tell you what's going to happen. One day when all this is shut down and, and we're called on home and, and the world is being renovated by fire, uh, and those people have to stand before God. They will need, he'll not need any defense. He'll not need any at all because they will see him as he is and they will tremble and they will fear and then they'll be condemned to eternity separated from him. God doesn't need protecting. You're right. But we are what God has given us in the word. What he has warned us about in the last days will come mockers, the, these people who will, um, and it says in the last time, uh, they'll, they'll be mockers. We are accountable for that knowledge. Everything that he has given us, <clears throat> this is a wonderful thing, and it's a dreadful thing. This whole Bible God has given us to give us instruction, correction. Uh, uh, he gives us this that we might know the signs of the times that we might be prepared or you know, preparing for them. We, um, we have that blessing, but this is also a warning. We're accountable for what he's given us. You're accountable for your talents. You're accountable for the knowledge he's given you, your abilities. All these things you're accountable for. And so not only is it a comfort, but it's also a warning uh, to me. You know, I need to be very diligent to do what God has called me to do. You need to be very diligent to use your talents for the Lord. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the things of this world. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I tell you that you're accountable um, 
for knowing what the Word of God says. How does that accountability come in for you? That's a hard question because I didn't phrase it right. What are what is an instance or what is a um, in, mm-hmm. how can you un, how can you see that you're accountable? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I would say be doers of the word, not hearers only. That's a big one. Yeah, we're accountable to do the word, not only to hear it. That's in James, I believe. Uh, so yeah, we're accountable not only that. But how about uh, is there any other ways that we're accountable? Yeah, which would which would couple with his. We need to have a good testimony. It'd be doing the word of God. Anything else? Devotional time. Devotional time. There's a slightly obvious one. Maybe it's not so obvious. But if if we don't know the word of God, how do we know we're being taught error or truth? Are we not accountable for those we sit under and whether they're teaching us correctly or not? You know? Um, the Brians were, were righteous because they went back and they, they checked the word. They, they wanted to constantly make sure they were being taught the right thing. And I think that's important. Uh, don't allow yourself uh, to, to just feed me. You know, Pick up your fork, pick up your knife, and feed yourself. I mean, get into the word of God. Be sure that what you're being given is, is correct. I think we need to be aware that there are uh, those out there who would teach the Word of God but don't measure up to the Word of God. I think we need to be aware that, they, uh, that we are responsible to know that we're being co- taught correctly. We're responsible to search the Word of God and, and ask if there seems to be a discrepancy. Um, I hope you understand, and I've said this enough, that if, when I'm preaching and if you have questions, first of all, I think you need to get into the Word of God. You know, some, I found that in my life, sometimes I would... Um, I remember coming home from uh, uh, saying that he's so wrong, he's so wrong, he's so wrong. He doesn't say it in the Word of God. And get home, and I've been pouring this into Vera's ear. Get home and search, and I said, Vera, that's exactly what it says. I mean, I was wrong the whole time, but I was so uh, certain that the preacher was wrong. But it was me the whole time. And I think that's what you need to be. You may think somebody's wrong, and you may think they're right, but you need to always... Back up from the Word of God. I mean, make sure that what you're saying, make sure that what you're being taught is absolutely correct. Be wary of those that don't measure up. Be responsible to search the Word of God. <clears throat> if you don't do these things, you can't know. Um, I, I encourage people to read uh, the Bible. Read as much as you can and then read um, as much as you can in one sitting. Some people have uh, medical conditions where they can't. You know, I understand all that, but, uh, but you can do what you can do and do all that you can do. Um, but I know for me, because of the amount I read now, um, when people start quoting verses, I catch it immediately if it's King James or not. Every now and then I get one that I don't really catch, but that helps me. Okay, they're not in the King James, what are they in? The New Living Bible or this or that. I don't know what they're in, but I know it's not King James. So we're responsible. We need to understand. It's, it's, is responsibility a light thing? No, it's not. So that means it may be difficult. You may have to get up earlier. You get 4.30 now. Would you like to get 4? Not really. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but you, 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 have to, uh, you have to do something. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. You have to be uh, willing to be diligent enough to know the Word of God. And these people here that mock you, if you know the Word of God, you understand that they're going to do this. They, now, let me go back and say this. I asked you what you thought of mockers. Let me tell you what I think. When I, when I think of people who are mockers, I think of people who scoff at what you believe. I, I also think, and, and the, word, the word here they have for mockers literally means this, to play like a child. You ever been around a bunch of kids? You know, and they, they make faces and they, they do all sorts of mimicking. Oh, it gets so irritating at times. Um, but that's what they would do. And, and so these are people that, that fall into that category. I look at them as, as very childish, very immature. Could be just angry people. I don't know. It's kind of sometimes when you can watch children, 
mock certain things, they're funny. But when an adult starts doing it, it's kind of insulting. Why would you be so rude as to do this? Why would you do that? Well, in our days, <clears throat> they do it because they hate God. And they hate us because we love God. Uh, I say hate, that's a strong word, but uh, maybe I should say they greatly dislike us. Uh, but we are not what they are. Um, now, mockers are also something else. How else would you define a mocker or a characteristic? So they're irreverent. They're not showing the proper respect for authority. Is that a character trait for them? That somebody's irreverent? It could be. It could be. Well, go ahead. It depends on what, it, what their understanding of what they're making fun of, too, I think. I can well, make fun of something <coughs> that I don't think is all that serious. To you, it might be, to somebody else, it might be a very... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking more of, um, in the Christian okay. terms, as far as our belief in, in, in unbelievers, mockers, because I think that's where they're going at here, how they told you there should be mockers in the last days. And so I, I go back to the, the idea of being irreverent. Um, they, don't, they have no respect for authority, because in, in the end, are they mocking us or mocking God? And that's where I go. They're mocking God. They're not being very respectful to God. <clears throat> so I think they're going to answer to God. They may think this means nothing. A lot of people do. They, they kind of play like it is nothing. Oh, I was just joking. They try to blow it off. But it's not a, a, a joke to, to mock God. This is very serious. I guess one way I would possibly think of it is there might be areas, areas where we don't agree with, say, the Catholic Church. It might be easy for us to mock it. And a Catholic who would look at it, what we're saying, might say, take great offense and think they would take it as we're You know, that was a pretty good application because I used to, um, there was a movie years ago I watched and, and the man would do that, you know. And so I, I did, I did that. Um, and it was a, a something I just poked fun at. And you're right, I shouldn't be doing that because I am mocking them. It's, it's very good. And I'm not saying that I understand exactly what you're saying. Because we're looking at, and, and I was looking at it from their being disrespectful to us, but can we not all as well, and that's a very valid point, be disrespectful to them? Could we not also mock them, and should we mock them? I think the more we mock people, the, especially um, uh, people that we're dealing with, uh, people that we might have a potential with, you're looking at shutting down doors of ministry. Now, I normally would not do that... Um, I don't think I do it too much outside the house, but I may have because it got to be a habit. So, But that's a very good point. I appreciate that. We need to be careful that we don't find ourselves in their shoes being mockers. We need to be respectful. But that's part of our ministry. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors to show other people to how to uh, come to God, to be reconciled to God. And if we're being disrespectful, what does that do for our testimony to bring them to God? Well, it's a little damaging. Connecting with what he said, too, um, I've seen a lot of people recently mocking authority. And that's definitely against what God says. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, mocking the president's you know, world leaders. And God says that we are not to. Yeah, I, I fully agree wrong. with you. Even though they are wrong, we're not supposed to speak wrong about I, I do not, I did not want Biden to be my president. But he was. Now, I, I don't really have a whole lot of respect for some of the decisions he's made, but you've got to respect the office. He is an authority, and a lot of people didn't do that. That's a good point. We need to respect authority. You know, if you were in a position of authority, uh, would you want to be disrespected? No, and I wouldn't either, so I think it's a very good point. Yes, ma'am. Oh, boy. That is a very good illustration. He, um, he would not lift his hand against God's anointed. And so um, uh, that was just a simple fact that Saul was placed into that position by God, and he did not feel he had any authority to go against that. Now, on the other hand, 
you have to ask yourself, do you believe the authorities we have over us today are placed by God or not? Oh, I'm wondering how y'all's going to answer that because I definitely believe God puts up who he puts up and he takes down who he takes down. So yes, I do believe he, he puts in authority. And yes, ma'am. You, you had mentioned characteristics that go with mockers and rebellion would be one of them. Oh, yeah. Rebel. And that, we've just brought that out of our mocking authorities and stuff. Ah, that's good. If God has placed those people in authority and we mock them, what have we done? We've rebelled against God's authority. We say, well, you know, I, didn't, I really didn't like that man in. Well, trust me, I didn't either. But God put him there. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think the people deserved what they got? Now, you, know, you have Trudeau. We deserve worse. Yeah. Now, you have Trudeau, and I'm not getting into your politics, but do you deserve what you got? The truth is, this is this Canada is not a righteous nation. America is not a righteous nation. You know? So we're getting what we deserve. This is, the, this is the, the type of people we have in our nation. These are the ones that are brought up on, on the knees of mothers who don't know God, don't serve God, and then they get old enough, they get put in position. So you're getting what you deserve, unfortunately. Yes, sir. And God can use them, even if they're not godly people, God can use them to wake people up to the world. Sure, sure. That reminds me of that lady. Well, I won't get into that tonight. Anyway. <clears throat> Just let that go. <clears throat> um, there are proper avenues to approach authority now that we've gotten into that. Um, what do you do when you have an authority? Well, let's just use me. I'm sitting here preaching, um, and you disagree with, with what I've said. How do you approach me? How, how is that taken care of? Uh, how would God have you do that? Yes, ma'am? I would think maybe, like you said, you'd have to check in, in God's Word first and make sure that you knew what you were talking about. But also I think it should be done uh, in private, not in front of. It's something serious, not in front of everyone, I wouldn't think. Okay. Um, anybody else? The first thing I would do is pray. Yeah. yeah. Pray and, and, get, and get close to God and get in the Word of God. I think <clears throat> there is wisdom to, um, to being quiet you know, I don't think you, you sow discord because that's you're doing the job of Satan, sowing discord among the people, so you go to the pastor. I, I've actually been in this situation, and I went into the pastor and talked with him, and I was a fairly new Christian. And um, he, would, he would have gone, and he, as a matter of fact, he told me he would have disobeyed the Word of God to do some things, to bring somebody back into the fold. I'm like, I'm not really for that. And... and and I hadn't been saved eight months, so you understand where I'm at. And then we got in the conversation, and he would, um, he said that, that he liked some of these preachers of the world today, and some of them were great men in the past, but they had really fallen. And I'm like, well, um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I talked with him, and I seen where we were both at, and um, then we quietly left the church. You know, I tried to do it quietly. Um, what he did was underhanded, and I'll just tell you what he did. And I told him, I went and told him, I said, I believe it's time for us to leave the church, and so we won't be returning. I've already found a church, and I've, or I'm going to find a church that we're going to go to. And <clears throat> he said, well, I'm going to send you away into the ministry. So he pulled us up in front of the church, knowing that we were leaving because we did not uh, believe what he was doing was right, that what he was teaching was right, and uh, that he would... Uh, of went against the word of God, and he brought us up in front of the church and said, uh, these are uh, Roland and Vera Mitch, and we're going to send them away into the ministry. They're going to go out into the ministry. And that's how he, that, that was our last Sunday in church. Now what am I going to say? I'm going to stand up in front of everybody and say, no, no. I shook their hands and walked out that door. But, uh, that's it. You know, that was tough. You, you think about this. The, the, the pastor was willingly deceiving the whole church. And, and we're sitting there, and we're, we're, we're like, we're looking at each other. You know, what do we do? You know, And I've been only saved eight months. So it was a very difficult situation. I said, the best thing we could do is, is, is just leave here quietly, because we don't want to sow discord among the people. Well, that's where you throw heaping coals on his head. But I didn't have a fire handy. 
Yes, sir. I do. I do. But it just, you know, if I'd have responded and said anything, uh, trying to correct that, it wasn't first my place to correct. It was God's. That was God's man. He said God put him there. So here, who am I? I'm eight months saved. Who am I to 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 do that? So, and then second of all, if I'd have done that, would I have sowed seed among the the people of that church to um, uh, to cause them to want to go against their pastor, or could I split that? See, uh, and I didn't think of all that then. I just felt like God would have me get out of there quietly and quickly. That's all I thought. Um, uh, so it was it was it was a difficult time, but this happens. You know, you have people that that do that. You have people that will manipulate the word of God. But scoffers, these people who reject authority, that disagree, uh, to properly do that, I think you do. I think first of all, you want to be sure that that you're standing on good ground. Second of all, I think you want to approach the pastor. I think that if um, uh, it's just you, uh, you probably should ease out of there and just just go. But the if you really um, want to go by the Bible, I, I do. I think a pastor is just a man, okay? So I think you go to him. If, and let's say um, he's in sin. Not that you disagree, but you know he's in sin. The Bible gives us a way to deal with sin in the church. So you go to him, you tell him what you know, and, um, and just tell him, say, you know, let's pray or whatever. And, and, and if he continues on, then you take somebody out of the church. You have to have a witness. And I would suggest taking a deacon or, or somebody. We don't have elders. We don't have deacons at this point. But take somebody that's respected, uh, that is working in the church, that's considered spiritual, and then take them. Explain to them what you, what's going on. Take them to the pastor. And then if that was continued to happen, the next step in the Bible is for the, the, for the church. I mean, so if you've got a pastor in sin and it's a delicate situation, I would never want to be put in that situation. Never. I would probably address him and then leave. That's probably what I do in most cases. But understanding, I don't know that that'd be right. Uh, the Bible does give us ways to deal with it, but it would be such a, a tough thing. You, you better be prayed up and you better be walking straight when you go to do that. So, anyway. So... We, when you look at this scoffers, and we've mentioned it, there's not the idea comes forth. There won't be anything, any reverence toward the things of God, toward God Himself, toward the people of God. Uh, it's just not going to be happening. These people are going to be showing contempt. Um, he goes on to say here, said so these, excuse me, how they told you there were should be mockers in the last time. That last time got my attention. Do you believe we're in the last days now? You know? Well, if we were in the last days in Paul's day, we're definitely in the last days now. If there were mockers in Paul's day, the multiplication of mockers in our day should tell me we're even more, uh, even closer to that time, to the last day, if you would. And so as I look at it, it's, it's more of a, to me, I see the urgency of the hour, the urgency of leading people to Christ, the urgency of, of if you... if when I say leading to Christ, of, of trying to see people saved, but I, I, I think that's going to be reduced down because of the you have so many mockers. People don't want to get ridiculed. But the urgency is there that we need to be about my Father's business, as Christ said. And I think that's very important as, as the time winnows down. What, is, what does the song say? It said, um, the night is coming when we'll work no more. And so that night is coming. When you talk about the last days, the last times, the the, the the era is whittling down and we need to be about his business. So I think we have a clear indication of the age in which we live. I think uh, it, it's, it's very close to the end times. And then he mentions these mockers. It gives you a identifiable trait here. He said, who should walk after their own ungodly lust? People who are not willing to walk with God. Uh, whether they claim to be Christian, whether they're in churches or not, but they walk after their own lust. And these are not, and by, remember what I said about the lust. When you take this word and define it out, and you go far enough, it, it gives you the idea that this is uh, sexual sins. And um, 
by the way, when you hit 19, it does say who separate themselves sensual. Okay, so it, it leads into what I'm telling you. Uh, they, they walk after these ungodly lusts, these uh, sexual uh, sins, these desires, or these thoughts, these whatever they are. These are. They're walking after that. Well, it's nothing but natural. Oh boy, have you ever heard that before? We heard that in Ukraine. Talk about the human body and the nudity. And they would say, oh, it's just natural. It's just the human body. I'm not going any further with that, but you understand. Kind of a shock for us. They're doing whatever they desire to do. Even though it's wrong and forbidden, they don't care. It's what they desire. Yes, sir. Yeah, the Romans said that too. What's that? That it was natural. Oh, yeah. That was the Romans? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I can see that though with the Roman baths and stuff. I can see that actually in, in the Japanese culture where they have all those baths that everybody get into. And I think it's, you know, separated by gender. I imagine there's some confusion there today. I don't know so much as that, but it was uh, other, uh, other stuff. I mean, I have, I have this book around somewhere. He was, he's a Christian. He's like a British sociologist, and he's a Christian. And I came across that where he talked about one of the arguments of today is that, that natural is, like, it's just natural, but the Romans are saying the same thing. Well, I tell you, if you, <clears throat> if you, stay, if you take the, um, the concept of promiscuity, and you study it out and what it does into the society is devastating. It really is. Uh, and it's not realized in our day and age. People don't care, really. And these people here, they don't care. They're walking after their own lust. They didn't have respect one toward another. They don't have respect to God. They didn't have respect to any, anybody's belief. Uh, you know, kind of like, I hate to say it, but it's kind of like our day here. You know, nobody, if you, you have your opinion, it's right. You know, and you impress it on everybody else, but they have different opinions. You know, so if, you're, if, if everybody's opinion is right, how do you have unity? You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you, everybody can't be right. You, you, somebody's got to be wrong sometime. Please. You know, um, my wife tells me that all the time. She says, you've got to be wrong sometime. I said, honey, just don't make it today. But yeah, we're not always right. Learn to live up to your mistakes. But these people in our day and age, that's what they are. They don't have respect for another person's opinion. They're not even willing to listen. Matter of fact, if you don't buy into theirs, they get very brutal. Um, but that's what I think of when I read this. They're not willing to give respect. They want to be respected, but they're not willing to give it. So after their own ungodly dust, they're doing what they desire, though it's wrong and it's forbidden, they were going to fulfill that no matter what it costs. Now, there's one trait that hits me about the ungodly who walk after their own desires. And that is they're not willing to be self-disciplined. They're not willing to discipline themselves. Not to, they're not willing to submit to the rule of God. They're not willing to submit to the rule of being disciplined. Uh, you can't force it on him. Um, but one day God will. One day God will rule and they won't have any choice about that. All right, on the 19, I'll tell you what. Well, we'll go a little further. It says, these be they uh, who separate themselves. Now, separation is a good thing, I think. But what do you think they're separating from? It says, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having the spirit. Well, that's exactly right. They don't, they don't have anything to do with the God. They separate themselves. These mockers, they separate from others. And I think this is a lot like what we have today, as I mentioned before. You know, if you don't believe what I say, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with you. If you don't, fill in, if you don't fit into my shoes, I don't want nothing to do with you. So everybody's got to be of one mold and one make. God didn't make us like that. As a matter of fact, I would say this. God gave you a brain to think. You're an individual. And when somebody starts talking this, what we call in the South Bologna, you need to think it through. If there's one thing um, I wanted out of college when I, when I went there was to learn how to study. If there's one thing I wanted to leave you with um, in all my time here is to think. Think about what the Word of God says. Analyze it. Think about what people are trying to feed you. Think. The world loves sheep. 
They love people that are, they can lead any way they want. Don't be somebody so willing to be led unless it's by the Spirit of God. Think for yourself. Get in the Word of God and rightly divide it. Do not allow worldliness to become your leader in life. Um, I think uh, Jonathan's absolutely right. I think by context, these people are separating themselves from others who claim to be believers. We're not the same. Well, you know, we should, we should uh, separate ourselves from the unbeliever. Should we not? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, we should. Does that mean we have no contact with them? Well, thank you for that, because if you don't have any contact with them, you can't be a light unto them. Um, I've, I've made this statement many times. I believe you choose the times you're going to be with them. You have somebody that's unsaved, okay, well, I'll choose. I'm going to be around you for a couple hours this day or that day or maybe a couple hours twice in a week, but then I'm going to back off. I'm not going to have myself. All my friends are not going to be unsaved people, and they're not going to be people. Unsaved people are not going to be the ones I stand around all the time and talk with. Because their goal in life, their desires, and what they want to be is different from what I want. They don't care. They, they may be following their lust. They may be into drinking and drugs and everything. I don't want that. I've seen what that can do to my life. I don't want that. I want more of God in my life. And so you need to think for yourself. You need to separate yourself from those things which would dent your testimony or, or hinder your walk with God or make you look like one of them and not a child of God. Separate yourself from uh, choose the time and be sure that you're not making all your time for them. Um, the major difference, and it says they, they separate themselves. First, they separate themselves from the children of God. They separate themselves from the thing of God. They separate themselves to themselves to do what they want, that they might rule over themselves and, and give themselves all these desires. Uh, they not. What are they governed by? We should be governed by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. What are they governed by? They're governed by themselves, but what part of themselves? Um, yeah, but I want, to, I want a different word. I want a different word. You're looking, you're thinking of the physical, and I want you to think more of the emotional. Okay, I'm just beating you up now. All that's true. But I was looking for some words, so I give them to you because I don't want I don't want to beat you to death. They're 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 governed by their passions, and I mentioned emotions. You could have used that word, but their passions, you know, a lust. They're, they're the, it's the flesh, like Barbara said. It's the flesh, and that flesh has these passions in it. That's not the spirit of God leading them. Okay, they they allow their passions. You get around emotional people, and what do they do? Whatever the motion is at that moment, if you'd put them in a little room, they'd bounce off the walls. I'm like, my goodness, um, the Spirit of God stabilizes you, He establishes you in Christ, and you, those emotions become more uh, calmed. You know, you, you, and I'll go back to an illustration about the pandemic. You talk about that uh, shot, and people would get, oh, so radical, and, you know. But um, if you're thinking God's in control, you know, in order to do this ministry, I take the shot and I allow God to work out the circumstances. Now, the truth is, whether I be alive or whether I be dead, I'm in Christ, and it's God's will. You can't, you, this little shot is not going to defeat the will of God. But that emotion doesn't think about that. It thinks about all these other things. Okay, yes, sir. Um, I just, you said they're governed by, and you were looking for the word of what they were governed by, say passions, but what I found it's interesting is... Um, is, so you think of the word governor and or governed by, and I remember, I can't remember where it was, some ham radio operator guy, and he was showing me this machine thing he had, mm -hmm. and it had a governor. You know, they, in machines, they have, I think, what is that, something that controls the they, speed or something? They have them in Hess. The Hess trucks used to run gas. I don't know if you know, H-E-S-S, Hess trucks. They were green and white. The Hess um, men that drove them tractor trailers were not allowed to go over 55. So Hess put governors on all their trucks. It limited the speed that they can go. They could never go over 55. And so a governor limits you. If you're governed by the Holy Spirit, he limits you from doing sin. You're, you're willing to follow him. Is he going into sin? No. But if you're governed by the flesh, where do you go? There is no limit because the flesh cannot be satisfied. 
And so understanding how that goes. But that's a very good, that was a very good illustration. It was to be governed by. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to call it here. Uh, any other questions or thoughts that we want to kick out? Okay, let's stop that. Brother, um, 